we all have been dealing with a lot since the pandemic has started. Indian healthcare workers are trying their best to control the situation. National Institute of Disaster Management encourages you to take the preventive measures against the coronavirus. Always wear a mask and sanitize your hands frequently. Also follow all the protocols of social distancing. Get yourself vaccinated from your nearest vaccination center. Until then, stay home and stay safe. Good morning, friends. Uh, I am Santosh Kumar, work with the National Institute of Disaster Management, Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India. Uh, this is very, very important day as that we are going ahead with the kind of a public awareness webinar. Honorable Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Narendra Modi, has actually on the October of 8th, uh, gave a public campaign uh, seeing the uh, kind of uh, uh, the festivity season, which is coming uh, to India and large number of expected crowds, uh, crowd uh, likely to face uh, uh, this kind of a situation where that uh, we see that the Shahra just ended. We are uh, either at the Bakrid uh, is over, we are waiting for Diwali, Bhayaduj, then we are also waiting for Chhat Puja, Christmas and the New Year uh, 2021. So all these festivals uh, as a being a social animal, uh, we tend to uh, greet each other with a kind of uh, we give hug to each other, we handshaking we do with each other, and also we greet each other in a different manner depending on that what kind of a practices which we have. But at the si same time, the reality is this that we are also grappling with the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which is not ended and rather it is uh, it has magnified uh, many times than before. So there is a time that we should be extra careful and we should be taking such kind of a, uh, this uh, measures which uh, our panelists would be uh, talking about other than also that social distancing, uh, washing hands, uh, wearing of mask, personal hygiene, uh, which we have been practicing for the last seven, eight months. But how uh, seriously actually we are uh, engaged into these practices that depends on that that is reflecting uh, in the kind of uh, cases which is happening. It means somewhere we have not been that careful. Uh, so that is why that cases are increasing. So uh, we need to be extra careful and uh, we have to save ourselves and also save others. So in this context, we uh, I welcome uh, the distinguished panelist, uh, Shri Kamal Kesorji, uh, member NDMA, we have uh, Dr. Bhargav uh, from ICMR. We have Major General Manoj Kumar Bindal, uh, Executive Director NIDM. And we also have Dr. Uh, Sandhya uh, uh, from uh, Auckland, uh, New Zealand. She is uh, seven and a half hours ahead of our time. So Indian Standard Time, we have started our deliberations at 11.30, which we would be uh, continuing for two hours from now. Uh, uh, so this is the kind of a challenge which we are saying that why we go for a public uh, awareness as a Jan Andolan. Uh, the idea is to uh, the idea is to have everyone informed about this and information does not remain confined to the information as such. How it is leading to action and also leading to changed behavior, and the changed behavior also gets kind of a how we uh, it becomes the habit of individual. Uh, uh, for protecting uh, from the coronavirus, uh, this is a uh, this is a kind of a thing which uh, I was also uh, thinking to share some of the important uh, global campaign uh, of the social cause, which has been uh, actually a very very uh, kind of a. Uh, but that I would do uh, not uh, now. I would be doing at the end of the kind of a. Uh, uh, this deliberation so that we also remember those things what we had uh, uh, in the past. So, uh, friends, uh, this is a very, very important uh, thing that we are uh, deliberating. Once again, I take this opportunity to uh, welcome all of you. 
uh, Major General Manoj Kumar Bindal, who is the Executive Director of the National Institute of Disaster Management, uh, uh, who is anchoring this entire, uh, this kind of an initiative, especially uh, making people aware and also taking this uh, various agenda and functions of the National Institute of Disaster Management. Under his leadership, uh, many of the things are being organized. So I would request uh, Major General Bindal to kindly um, give the introductory remarks. Uh, I thank all the distinguished delegates who have joined so far and who would be joining uh, in times to come. Uh, General Bindal, uh, I welcome you and I request you to kindly give the introductory remarks. Uh, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, please, please. Uh, so, uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, uh, inviting me. This is a very important webinar on which uh, we are conducting because Prime Minister has recently launched it in October 2020 uh, to Jan Andolan for ensuring COVID appropriate behavior among the citizens of the country. I uh, welcome all the uh, esteemed panelists who are here. Uh, Sri Kamal Kishore from Mumbai NDMA, Dr. Sandhya from uh, New Zealand, and uh, Dr. Balram Bhargav, who's uh, joining us shortly, and all the participants who have already joined are in the process of joining. Uh, uh, it is very important that uh, uh, we are aware that this unprecedented and unanticipated challenges uh, which have come up uh, during the COVID-19 and which has, in, has made us realize, uh, everyone realize that collective action and support from all is the only way to deal with such uh, pandemics or such type of disasters, large scale disasters. So while all necessary measures to fight the spread of the coronavirus, novel coronavirus, and COVID-2019, they are being effectively led by the central government and the state governments. There is a need to reinforce the importance of preventive measures and practices in a sustained manner to deal with the disease, disease over the long run, because vaccine is not in the horizon as of now, and vaccine will take some time to come, uh, and we don't know when actually and how effective that will be. So while all necessary measures to fight the spread of novel coronavirus are being effectively led. There is a need to reinforce that uh, uh, the growing public indifference to wearing masks and avoid mask gatherings and uh, uh, other related issues, which is leading to increase in the number of cases. Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, he launched this Jan Andolan, which I referred earlier. Uh, for COVID-19 appropriate behavior in October 19, uh, October uh, 2020. So the campaign was launched by the way of a tweet uh, in view of the upcoming festival and winter seasons, as well as the opening up of the economy. The aim of the campaign is to encourage people's participation and a COVID-19 pledge required to be taken by everyone. It endeavors to be a low cost but high intensity campaign with the key messages to wear masks, follow for physical distancing, and maintain hand hygiene being of paramount importance. So in this con uh, connection, a concerted action plan was implemented and is being implemented by the central ministries, state departments, the union territories, with region-specific targeted communication in high caseload districts uh, as per the requirement. It also includes uh, simple and easily understandable messages to each and every citizen, dissemination through the country using all media platforms, banners and posters at public places involving frontline workers and targeting the beneficiaries of the government schemes. So it will also involve installing hoardings, wall paintings, electronic display boards in government premises, involvement of local and national influencers to drive home the message and running mobile mobile vans for regular awareness generations. Uh, our audio messages, pamphlets, brochures will be distributed in a bit to create this awareness. And support of local cable operators and media also is being sought for effective outreach and impact. So the decision has been taken to remind the public that the pandemic is still raging. And as masks, social distancing and washing hands are the three ways to remain safe in absence of any vaccine, 
the central government has launched the public campaign to raise awareness about these measures in public places. So it is pertinent to uh, note that India has so far been able to keep the COVID-19 casualty count low and recovery is very high. The campaign is intended to keep it that way. In addition, the various appropriate behaviors for COVID-19 also include greet without physical contact, maintain physical distance, wear masks at all times, avoid touching your eyes, nose or mouth uh, unless you have sanitized your hands, maintain respiratory hygiene, wash hands regularly and thoroughly, regularly clean and disinfect frequently surfaces, do not spit in the public, avoid unnecessary travel, do not discriminate against anyone. Uh, we have seen that during COVID-19, the health workers were targeted uh, since they come in contact, they were targeted by people who were not coming in contact. So such discrimination should not happen. Do not circulate social media posts which carry unverified or negative information. Seek information on, on COVID-19 from credible sources. Call government helplines help for any query and seek psychological support in case of uh, stress or anxiety, if any. So if these measures effectively implemented at public places across the nation, the number of cases will be minimized. In addition, uh, the health workers, the sanitation staff need to be extra careful and proper procedures have to be put in place that they are uh, given the uh, required kit. They are being enabled in every way possible so that they remain healthy and they keep the environment healthy. Medical waste disposal is a major issue which is coming up. I think medical waste, right from the moment it is generated in a ward or even not in a ward, even at houses, that is the mask that we use, of, uh, uh, gloves that we wear uh, for our own protection. Uh, all these things are a source of potential uh, community carriers, community spread carriers. So their management uh, and their disposal by the municipal uh, municipalities or the local administration needs to be given a, a extra extra uh, attention so that the the medical waste uh, is properly disposed of and it is uh, not contributing to the spread of COVID-19 virus. The use of uh, volunteers, the youth, the civil defense educational institutions, uh, volunteerism by the citizens needs to be prom promoted. Uh, needs to be promoted, need, they need to be motivated. And uh, for that, the local heroes have to come forward and uh, lead from the front. There has to be a focused approach, but it's not reading the interpretation of the orders. Uh, the orders came that all those in the vehicle uh, should be wearing a mask. So the uh, a uh, drive was taken last to last Sunday in the uh, city, wherein I saw people uh, catching families who were in a private car, and if one of them was not wearing a mask. Whereas it is the public transport which is, needs to be targeted. A family is staying at home without wearing a mask, and when they're in the protective environment of their own private vehicle, uh, driving to place to place V, uh, the importance of wearing masks inside a closed vehicle by the members who are staying 24 seven in the same house without wearing a mask is not understood. So that interpretation of the correct understanding of the orders is very necessary so that it is implemented in the right sense. Uh, media, I have already highlighted and they have a major, major role to play. Today, the media outlets, especially the TV media, uh, paid media is not uh, reflecting enough on COVID-19 appropriate behavior. And I think that requires a Philip uh, for the whole thing. And public places uh, is the most vulnerable, most sensitive, and hence they must be targeted in a big way. And uh, uh, I will appeal to all the uh, volunteers who can help out in this because it is not possible for the government to step in in each and every location. Uh, some responsibility has to be taken by us as citizens of the country to uh, reduce this COVID-19 spread. Uh, with this, I have finished with my inaugural uh, uh, note, uh, introductory remarks, and I'm keen to hear other panelists. Uh, thank you so much. And over to you, Professor Santosh. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, General Bindal. Uh, mask Pahanna, uh, Jan Sahab Hagita, 
हाथ धोना और शारीरिक दूरी ये बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण है और इसके साथ साथ जो लॉ की जो अंडरस्टैंडिंग है इन्फोर्समेंट एजेंसी की उसका इंटरप्रिटेशन भी सही होना चाहिए किसको पकड़ना है किसको नहीं पकड़ना है किसको इन्फोर्स करना है किसको नहीं करना है एक इनेबलिंग इन्वायरमेंट ऐसा होना चाहिए कि पूरा इको इसकी जो हम बात कर रहे हैं कोविड प्रिपेयरनेस की अप्रोप्रिएट बिहेवियर की इसमें यह सुनिश्चित करना बहुत जरूरी होगा साथ ही साथ जो वॉल्टियर्स की जो अपने रोल हैं उस पर हमें किस तरीके से देखना है उनको किस तरह से आगे लाना है प्लस जो बायो हमारे यूज हैं मास्क को कहाँ फेंके सामान का कैसे इस्तेमाल करें अस्पतालों में जो चीजें बाहर करनी है उसको किस तरह से हम प्रोटेक्टिव इन्वायरमेंट में ताकि लोगों को उसका नुकसान ना हो आदि आदि ये बहुत सारी इम्पोर्टेंट चीजें हैं विच यू हैव हाईलाइटेड and uh, we need to carry forward that how actually appropriate behavior at different levels by different agencies by different people are to be taken uh iske sath hi main shri kamal kishor ji ko uh, amantrit karna chahunga shri kamal kishor ji uh, sadasya hain uh, bhartiya aapda pradhikaran ke aapda prabandhan pradhikaran ke jo shirsh sthan hai bharatvarsh ki aur uh, kai uh, desh aur videshon mein unhone kai jagahon pe apni बात रखी है और एक डिस्कोर्स को बदलने में मदद की है आज कोविड 19 के बारे में जब हम चर्चा कर रहे हैं वी हैव सीन दैट हाउ कंट्रीज ग्रैपलिंग विद द लार्जर नंबर ऑफ केसेस एवरी सिटीज नाउ हैविंग दैट काइंड ऑफ रेड जोन काइंड ऑफ सिनेरियो ग्लोबली आल्सो मेनी कंट्रीज आर नाउ गोइंग फॉर द सेकेंड वेव और थर्ड वेव एंड ऑल्सो थिंकिंग ऑफ अनदर लॉकडाउन सिलेक्टिव लॉकडाउन साथ ही साथ हमारे देश में भी चुनाव की प्रक्रिया भी चल रही है और अन्य देशों में भी चुनाव की प्रक्रिया चल रही है तो किस तरह से हमारा अप्रोप्रिएट बिहेवियर इन सभी स्थानों में फेस्टिवल के साथ साथ हो और चूंकि आपने इसको देखा है तो आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू टू काइंडली गिव दिस इन ओवर नोट एज ए की नोट स्पीकर एज ए की नोट एड्रेस एट दैट हाउ वी शुड टेक दिस एजेंडा फॉरवर्ड ऑफ ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर already said. i think one thing which has become very clear in the uh, in the pandemic uh, the way this pandemic is different from other disasters that uh, agencies such as mine the national disaster management authority is used to do it, dealing with is that everybody is susceptible and everybody needs to do their bit no one can say that they are not susceptible and no one can say that they don't have a role to do in it so i mean hence the the rationale for uh a uh, jan or or a mass movement so uh but how do we get to a level where uh, the participation of uh the country's population in covid-19 uh, sensitive behavior uh, is very very high uh, i don't know whether we can put any estimate to what is the level of compliance right now but we can certainly say that it is not at a level that we desire you know for us to be able to uh, say that we are now doing everything thing we can in terms of behavior uh, i think the compliance would have to be something like 80 to 90% and we are far away, far below that so how actually uh, realize uh, the objective of making it a mass movement so i want to propose before you uh, five key approaches there is nothing new in uh, what i am going to say but these are just reminders first thing that i want to say is that we have to uh, draw from the experience of disaster risk management we talked about we we worked on how do you do a uh, flood sensitive behavior how do you do heat wave sensitive behavior how do you do earthquake sensitive behavior so there is something we can draw upon that and drawing upon that we have to invoke the notion of you know creating a critical mass of people who not only um, 
follow COVID-19 behavior, but also talk about it. And by doing that, create the whole notion of social conformity. When you have a critical mass of people who begin to do that, then people who don't follow that, uh, they, they should have some about being felt, uh, being isolated, uh, being, uh, you know, out of the sort of norm. So how do we build uh, the whole, uh, how do we build COVID-19 behavior as a social norm, which is widely accepted? So that if you don't follow it, you are the, you are the odd one out. So I think that that is uh, something that we need to pursue. Uh, the second thing I would say is uh, how can we use the influence influencers? Uh, we have seen influencers. You know, when you make a phone call, you hear uh, Amitabh Bachchan's voice urging us to behave responsibly in this era of COVID-19. But we have to go beyond that. They have to be influencers at the city level, at the neighborhood level. There has to be different kinds of influencers at the level of um, uh, in, in urban areas, in rural areas, people who actually have a sway over people. So, you know, we have used the, I mean, the prime minister himself is one of the biggest influencers. And beyond that, we've also uh, used, you know, Amitabh Bachchan, other celebrities, but there are other local level influencers. So we need to identify them, work with them. There could be a faith-based organizations, faith leaders who could actually promote that, particularly important in the time of, um, uh, of uh, festivals. So that's the second thing. How do we uh, develop fully the role of influencers? The third thing I want to say is that while we are doing a social media campaign and uh, broadcast media campaign, print campaign, uh, we also have to see how we can utilize our own cultural resources. Can we develop folk songs which basically in include COVID-19 behavior? Can we use uh, local um, uh, other performing arts to actually can we use Nukkar Natak? So how do we use our own cultural resources? How, you know, uh, the Ram Leela season has just, just gone by. It would have been interesting to see how we can use, you know, the format of Ram Leela itself and insert, you know, in a, in a dramatic way, in an interesting way, the message of COVID-19 behavior. So we must not underestimate the cultural resources we have that we can actually rely upon for for making uh, this happen. Fourth is, you know, we have to, while we are talking about uh, people adopting COVID-19 behaviors, we also have to see what uh, the government uh, set up at the central level as well as state level and local level. Um, civil society organizations, what is it that they can do in terms of enabling conditions? So, you know, if we have to talk about, uh, you know, everybody should wear a mask, everybody should, everybody should focus on clean hands, maintain distance. We really have to say that in some, see that in some parts of the country, it is also an issue of logistics. I think to a large extent, we have addressed that, but this is not something which just goes away. We have to continue to focus on it and we have to see how uh, we can, uh, create an environment where following COVID-19 sensitive behavior is easy. It is not a struggle for people. And fifth and final point is invoking penal provisions. You know, General Bindal talked about um, um, the, the, uh, the penalty imposed on people traveling in cars. So I think we have to have a whole suite of this as well. Uh, it, it, is, it, it is in a deliberate way that this is, I put this as the fifth point. Uh, there is a limit to how far a penal provision can go in, uh, you know, starting a mass movement. Mass movement really should come from within the society and not, not, not from the force of the state. But it is still required, you know, there should be disincentive for people to, to deviate from COVID-19 behavior. 
So if we did these five things, you know, bring, brought in the concept of social conformity, used influencers, uh, utilized our cultural resources, created enabling conditions, made judicious use of penal provisions, I think we would be able to quickly turn this into the kind of mass movement it needs to be, not just for a few weeks, but several months, perhaps lasting beyond a year uh, to, to be able to combat the problem of COVID-19. Thank you very much, Professor Santosh. Thank, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kamal Kishorji. Uh, very nicely put up that how the uh, risk management behavior can very well seamlessly can get integrated uh, into uh, this uh, COVID-19 behavior, appropriate behavior. And uh, acknowledging the role of uh, the cultural resources, that is very, very important that we have, India is very rich in those resources. Uh, we have theater, we have cinema, we have uh, local folk dance, folk songs, and so on and so forth, and we have highlighted it, that how that could be used in terms of uh, developing uh, this behavior, appropriate behavior. And uh, the role of influencers, uh, honorable prime ministers himself is a big influencer, and also that other local celebrities uh, along with the uh, uh, Bollywood celebrities. So uh, that local celebrities and then the faith is organizing. These are to be weaved into a kind of a framework of uh, uh, entire process of uh, changed behavior. Uh, uh, I'm grateful to you that uh, you took time and. Uh, uh, actually highlighted all those five points as a very, very important uh, and what kind of a rural and what kind of urban behavior are required to be taken into the changing environment as uh, COVID is going to stay for another year or so. So it's not that uh, we should be forgetting and uh, uh, the behavior uh, become irresponsible. And if it becomes irresponsible, what General Bindal said that which you have reiterated, that penal provision, that how that can be uh, enforced by the enforcement agencies. Uh, so thank you very much uh, uh, for giving these insights, and I would request you to kindly stay as long as you can. I know that you are very busy in other meeting, uh, but I would request. Uh, 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 we had uh, uh, Dr. Anuradha, uh, have we uh, Dr. Sandhya on the board? Dr. Dr. Anuradha, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, so oh, Dr. Sandhya, I can see you now. So uh, she's on the board. Uh, her presentation is there uh, on the share mode. You need to. Uh, thank you very much. So now I would request uh, uh, Dr. Sandhya. Uh, I welcome you. Uh, you have been interacting with us in the child centric DRR uh, in that uh, bringing the children into awareness mode. Now we are thinking children and parents. Now here we are going for a kind of a countrywide campaign that how that can be taken up. So I extend my heartfelt thanks to Dr. Anuradha because she has been able to maneuver and want to practice this in the two yesterday so that your session go uh, very comfortably. So Dr. Sandhya, uh, I would request you to kindly uh, present your views and many viewers are there who can uh, really uh, be benefited uh, to inform you about uh, the audience that you have made uh, uh, very, very useful videos, small videos for educating people and which you have translated in many Indian languages. So that could be probably useful for us and uh, other than Spanish and other Arabic, which you are doing with, but Indian languages, which you have been able to focus. So uh, people are eager to, so I would request you to kindly uh, start your deliberations and I welcome you once again on behalf of an idea and government of India. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Kumar, uh, for the invitation uh, to uh, talk today and uh, present uh, my ideas on um, this Janandolan uh, uh, initiative that has been launched by Honorable uh, Prime Minister Modiji. And I'd like to say namaste to everybody and uh, kia ora from New Zealand. Um, so, actually, I've entitled my talk today. Can you see my um, slide? Yes, we can. Yeah, you okay. okay. We can see you. Go ahead. Okay. 
So I've entitled my talk today, Fighting COVID-19 India, um, Self-Empowerment and in Individual Responsibility for the Collective Good. And I think um, uh, uh, Major Bindalji and uh, Kamal Kishoreji both have um, you know, talked about this and uh, as has um, uh, Professor Kumar that, um, you know, uh, it is really uh, every single person has a responsibility in this pandemic um, for the collective good. Um, and so that is a very important thing for everybody to understand. And um, we need to basically remind ourselves of this because um, this COVID-19 pandemic is a marathon. It's not a short term race. And uh, unfortunately, everybody around the world is getting a little bit uh, fatigued, a little bit tired of having to, um, you know, continuously take the precautions. Um, but these precautions have to become a way of life and part of our normal behavior until such time as, you know, a vaccine is developed and, um, uh, you know, uh, we are all able to um, come out of this pandemic. So, you know, basically uh, my view on this, you know, Janandolan campaign for COVID India is basically that we all need to learn to live with the virus. As in, you know, we need to learn what the rules are, what the parameters are uh, that we need to um, uh, make part of our daily living so that uh, we stay alive basically and well throughout this whole pandemic. We, you know, uh, we don't want to die um, from the virus. Uh, and, you know, we have come a long way since the pandemic began, um, uh, you know, uh, back in um, December last year. Um, there has been a lot of progress in terms of um, treatments, um, in terms of our knowledge about, uh, you know, how we can uh, mitigate risk um, and avoid, you know, avoid getting the infection. So, uh, you know, this, this information, you know, we need to learn to just make part of our daily living so that we not only protect ourselves, but we protect everybody else at the same time. And the other very important message, um, which, uh, you know, um, Modiji said when he announced this campaign is together, we will succeed. And that is absolutely correct because only together um, can we succeed in um, getting this pandemic under control anywhere in the world, um, but particularly, uh, you know, relevant to India's situation at the moment. So actually the um, timing of this talk worked out quite well because I, just a few days ago, I had the privilege of meeting um, the New Zealand Director General of Health, uh, um, Dr. Ashley Bloomfield, who is the, um, you know, the, the, the front man um, on the right hand side of um, our, Honourable, our Honourable Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern in our fight for COVID. And he shared some important lessons from the New Zealand COVID response. And um, three of the uh, points that he shared, I think, are very relevant. Um, uh, and something that can be applied to this um, uh, campaign for India as well. So, so um, just as uh, the previous speakers have said, collective action is powerful, and and that's what has um, you know worked in New Zealand, and and in many of the places which have uh, controlled the pandemic. Um, the other thing which he said, which is very important, and I don't think um, the other speakers have touched on it, and I'm very passionate about this, and I think it's extremely important that um, he made the point that for an effective public health action, you need to help people understand why. So, you know, in order to motivate behaviour change for things to become habit, people have to understand why they have to do it. and. Um, and although, and the third point, which I thought was was very, very good, was that in a pandemic, um, you know, in, and in the current pandemic, there's not much that we can control. I mean, really, and people can start feeling very, uh, you know, uh, demotivated and think, oh, well, there's nothing in my control. But um, Dr. Bloomfield made a very salient point, and that is there is always something that we can control, and that is our behaviours. And our behaviours is exactly what will help control this pandemic um, and protect not only us, but everyone around us. So that's the you know, basic gist of what my talk is today, is that I would like to um, quickly go back over and remind everybody um, why it is that we are doing the behaviours 
of the you know wearing masks, the washing hands, the um, watching the distance, and just a few more extra points that we've learned about this virus that are very important um, for people in India to be aware of, especially um, heading into the festival season with, um, you know, as uh, Professor Kumar said, all the festivities coming up and the behaviours that go along with them of people collecting in groups, of, um, uh, you know, people singing, people embracing, um, and also the fact for India and, you know, the Northern Hemisphere, as you head into winter, a lot of um, activities will be taking place indoors. Also um, in India at the moment, uh, particularly in the North, I know that there is an issue of um, pollution. And of course, there is um, the decrease in temperature and the impact that has on um, the longevity and, and how long the virus um, lasts. So, um, yeah. So just, um, uh, um, I'd like to, you know, remind everybody that actually this COVID-19 pandemic is accelerating. Uh, it's growing um, at a rapid um, exponential rate. Uh, so, you know, um, the case, case numbers are increasing, but they're increasing exponentially. And this is all to do, do with this, um, you know, this what they call the R naught or the reproductive rate of um, COVID-19. And for people who, um, don't know what that means. It basically means that one person who's infected, it was thought that basically they, if somebody has COVID, they can infect two to three other people. And then those people can then go to infect two or three other people and so on and so forth till you have, you know, uh, as we have here, you know, this, you know, ex exponentially increasing number of people uh, infected with COVID, which is what's happened. I think last Monday, um, the world hit over 40 million cases. And I think within a week, we're up to it, uh, you know, we've increased by another 5 million. Uh, um, now, in reality, the um, actually the spread is, you know, more around five or six, but in, um, in some situations where the conditions are ideal for the virus to spread, which I will touch on, um, so-called super spreading events, I think there is one in Korea where they think that one person um, was basically responsible for 5,000 other people getting infected, you know, via this, uh, you know, chain. So, um, one of the big focuses of being able to control the pandemic, you know, in the long term and particularly um, in, in relevance to the place where India is at the moment, um, and it's something that countries like um, Japan and Korea have focused on very well is controlling these um, risk factors for these super spreading events because the nature of COVID-19 spread is that it tends to occur in clusters. So you see it happening in you know places where people gather for weddings, for funerals, you know, for um, celebrations, um, you know, uh, sports games, gyms, etc., so on and so forth. And the other point I'd like to highlight here, which I think people are becoming very complacent in India because you know, they think, well, you know, a lot of people are getting infected and it's all going to be okay, you know, you know, um, and, you know, herd immunity, it's not true. Uh, scientifically, um, you know, according to whatever understanding there is at the moment, there is no herd immunity possible unless and until there is a vaccine. And that is simply because that the immunity that you get from um, having a COVID infection is not long lasting. And we are only seeing the evidence of that now because this is a fairly new uh, pandemic, obviously. Um, so, you know, when people recently repeated the um, antibody uh, levels in, you know, people that had been infected in the UK, um, they found that the antibody levels had dropped, um, you know, within the last few months. So, for, and, and there have been cases of reinfection. So, um, you know, hoping for herd immunity um, and just uh, throwing all caution to the wind and not following the, um, uh, you know, the, the rules to protect yourself and others is, um, uh, you know, going to lead to, um, you know, people, loved ones um, becoming ill and, you know, um, having bad outcomes. So um, this is a, a, a good reminder um, that basically if you have no collective response, that the cases will rise. But if you have a collective response, then you will manage to flatten the curve. But um, uh, 
India, I would say at the moment, is um, uh, you know at that point where you know you had so, sort of a, a first uh, spike, and you know uh, you know because you had the lockdown and and things sort of maybe settled down a bit, um, but now uh, what's happening is that you know the numbers are are rising again basically so it's time and it's very timely that um uh, you know you've an announced this Dolan, to try and get things back under control now i mean wh why should i change my behavior wh why why should i change my behavior i mean people i mean think that only um one in five uh, people actually end up needing uh, hospital level care um so you know 20 percent of cases so if you if you think about uh, COVID. I mean, you think about it as you know this iceberg where there's all these cases which we don't know about. You know, where people had asymptomatic infections or there may be mild infections, and then you have your moderate cases, your severe cases, and then of course, um, you know, in the big scheme of things, of the total number of cases, sure, it's uh, you know a minority that actually die. But the issue is, is that we all know um, that. Although there are certain groups which are at higher risk of having a bad outcome with COVID, we've all heard and read cases where uh, somebody who was previously fit and healthy and young um, had a bad outcome and died from COVID. So really the difference in terms of having an asymptomatic, a mild, a moderate, severe case or dying from COVID is luck. So, I mean, a good enough reason to change your behavior is that you don't want to leave your fate up to luck. I mean, why would you when there is so much at stake? So that is very important. The other point, um, as from the previous slide, the, the point of you know keeping the cases under control is because when it doesn't, um, basically you exhaust your resources in terms of the hospital system and collapses. Now, what happens in those situations is if say you are in this group of moderate case where you know maybe you needed some oxygen um, and and that was and some treatment in hospital uh, in order to survive, but suddenly because nobody followed um, precautions and the hospital system became overwhelmed, um, and understanding that healthcare workers are um, getting infected at high rates and you know I mean they are not a never-ending resource. I mean it takes years and years to train one uh, doctor for example, or specialists. So you need to preserve these resources because suddenly that moderate case that needs oxygen um, can't get a bed and they end up having a very poor outcome. So um, we need to avoid overwhelming the hospital system at all cost. Otherwise, um, for example, uh, I just read uh, yesterday, the unfortunate circumstances affecting a small country like Belgium where um, in a population of 11 million, currently 300,000 people um, have uh, active COVID infections and they are 10 days off having a totally overwhelmed health system and looking at a situation where they might have to end up sending pa uh, patients to, to Germany uh, until such time that Germany accepts the patients. But then after that, uh, what do you do? So in India's circumstance, I mean, uh, I know that uh, previously Modi ji has, um, uh, you know, uh, talked about this Atmanir Bharat, and I mean, this is the need of the hour. Everyone needs to be self-sufficient and self-reliant, and understand how to protect themselves, their family, and in doing so, they will be protecting everybody. Now, it's very important um, in order to motivate behavior that you understand what is the enemy here? What are we fighting? What is the science behind this? Now, especially in India, you know, where there is a lot of community um, cases of COVID, it's very important to understand how it is that you actually contract the infection and what it actually does. Because it's, you know, uh, becoming paranoid or thinking that, you know, there's a lot of virus particles around and um, just by you know, uh, being out and about, I, I will get it, that's not actually the case. So basically uh, COVID-19 is an RNA virus. So it looks something like this. Um, it has this RNA, which is the genetic material that uh, helps it replicate. Um, it has a protein shell and it has a fatty envelope around the, other, around the outside. Now this fatty envelope is the virus's point of weakness, which we need to exploit. Because basically, if you wash your hands with for 20 seconds with soap and water and dry them well, 
for uh, use uh, alcohol, 60% uh, alcohol or greater um, based hand sanitizer, then you will um, disrupt this fatty envelope and you will deactivate the virus and it will not uh, you know, cause you any harm. Now, say you don't do that, um, the way in which you get infected is uh, if this virus, these virus particles enter through your eyes, nose or mouth, usually, um, by touching your face uh, with unclean hands. Now, scientifically, what happens here is that um, in this uh, outer layer, you have these spike proteins and they are like a key. And basically the lock is um, these ACE2 receptors, which sit um, you know, in great concentration on the cells lining your upper respiratory tract. So inside your nose and your mouth and your tongue. And also there are you know, ACE receptor, um, uh, these ACE receptor cells um, in different parts of your body. And, and, and this is why you know, it can attack uh, virtually every organ in the body. But this is the entry point. So basically what happens is this virus enters, it, um, the protein shell finds this, uh, the spike protein finds this uh, uh, little um, receptor, which is um, the lock. Uh, it, the key fits in, it opens the cell, and that's what the virus needs to replicate. It needs access to our cells, okay? And once one virus particle accesses that cell, that virus particle, um, just like the previous uh, diagram where I showed how one person spreads it, exactly in the same way that virus replicates in an exponential manner. And then you have so many virus particles for your body um, to deal with. And I will um, talk about this and is this issue and why um, you know, uh, all these uh, risk mitigation strategies of washing hands, watching your distance and wearing masks are important. Um, not only to uh, avoid getting infected in the first place, it's also very important because it will, um, even if you are uh, unlucky enough to get infected, these using these uh, measures will help reduce the viral load. So even if you can reduce, um, you know, the virus particles by, you know, one, two, three, or, you know, 100, you know, that will mean that there will be that many more, uh, many less virus particles that your body, your immune system has to fight off. So that is very, very important for everybody to understand. And actually, I have um, summarized this in a cartoon, which is available on my YouTube. So even a child or any member of your family could understand. And I have this in both English and Hindi in a short cartoon, um, just to explain um, the basic science of COVID. Now, as I mentioned, uh, COVID, uh, you know, once it enters, it can affect basically uh, most systems in your body. But importantly, if we are able to, uh, you know, we do get infected and if we are able to fight it up here in the upper respiratory tract, then hopefully, um, you know, with strong immunity, we can prevent all of this um, occurring. So, you know, I mean, I don't think there's any other picture that uh, is uh, more scary or more uh, provide that could provide more motivation for people to take care. Um, you know, I mean, you know, we've seen people get all sorts of bad long term effects from COVID as well. I mean, it's not just getting infected, it's um, people get infected for a long, you know, they, they don't recover or they have what they call at the moment long COVID, uh, where they have lasting, uh, you know, fatigue or, you know, medical issues that we're still learning about. So um, having said that, there's basically, you know, this COVID triangle for us to understand. So we have the virus, which we can't really change. Then we have um, ourselves, the host, where the virus is trying to enter. And then we have our environment. So um, we can't really change the virus, but we can um, reduce our risks by uh, modifying our environment. So, you know, being careful where we allow ourselves to be exposed and how we behave in those environments. And as a host factor, I would like to um, say that, you know, this um, pandemic, one of the biggest things that have come out of it is that people are actually thinking about their health. And so as a, as a host, I think it's a very important reminder and, and should be part of this Janandolan um, movement that uh, we need to build our fortress and make sure that we are in peak health and immunity so that we can fight the virus to the best of our ability. So, you know, um, just to reiterate, there are three form ways in which the virus is, um, uh, you know, uh, transmitted. 
um, you know, obviously surface transmission is there um, and more significant if you have somebody in your household that is infected or uh, you are living in a city where there is a lot of community spread, such as India, um, such as many of the places in India and the red zones. But mainly it was thought to be through droplets, which is, you know, um, uh, you know, the respiratory particles that we release when, you know, we cough, sneeze, talk. But uh, recently, and it had been contentious that aerosols is becoming, which are the smaller particles that are released even when we just breathe or talk, uh, they are also um, very important. And that is why the fourth um, issue in terms of risk mitigation, apart from uh, washing hands, uh, watching distance and wearing masks, is um, watching ventilation because of these aerosols. So it's very important. So uh, to explain the aerosols, this is a very good um, article that just came out um, with these illustrations where basically, you know, your respiratory droplet um, that we were, you know, obsessed with initially are particles that are, you know, larger than 300 micrometers and they generally fall to the ground, um, you know, before that two meters. And that's the, the reason for the, you know, the two meters social distancing. Um, but aerosols are the particles that are less than 100 micrometers and they can remain suspended in the air for hours. And you can think of it like um, smoke. If, if somebody was smoking, you can think of those particles like that smoke if you wanted to try and visualize them. And the important thing to understand is that the amount of aerosols that we emit um, uh, increase in amount and concentration depending on the volume of the person speaking and the duration the person is in the room. So we, um, so you can see in this diagram how the particles are, are increasing um, after you know 15 minutes and then an hour, and you know the maximum particles is if people have been in this person has been singing for an hour in this room and no windows have opened. So here they've got 50 times more particles. Um, then they had sitting silent, just, you know, one person in a short period of time. And this is something very, very important for people to understand in order to, you know, reduce their risk of um, getting COVID and getting a high viral load of COVID. So, um, you know, uh, as I said, uh, countries like Japan and uh, has, have done very well in trying to, you know, educate the public. Um, to try and reduce the risk of super spreading events. And I think India really needs to take this on board, particularly in the festival season and on your billboards, that uh, he came up with, they've come up with this mnemonic called a civic duty, which basically um, you need to avoid crowding indoors, low ventilation, close proximity, you know, crowds of people close together for long durations, particularly, of course, if they're unmasked. And if they are talking, singing, yelling, or breathing hard, like doing, you know, exercise, for example. So, I mean, a lower risk activities would be things like being outdoors. Now, I know in India and particularly in North India, that's difficult at the moment when pollution levels are high. Um, that you should wear masks um, and that they should um, fit uh, snugly. And you should wear them even when you can maintain a physical distance, particularly when you are indoors in these high risk scenarios. And the other thing which is very, very important that we need to think about is about ventilation and cleaning of the air by filtration, because um, that will help, um, you know, reduce uh, the number of concentration of, um, you know, infected aerosols in the air. Now, this was a, um, an excellent um, visualization, uh, which is a, you know, a Swiss cheese, uh, you know, the, the cheese with holes which basically shows that, you know, in order to, uh, why are there so many different behavior things that we are asked to follow? And that's because no single um, intervention alone is good enough because each one could have a flaw. So that's why we need to, you know, have multiple layers of, um, uh, you know, protection or um, precautions that we take so that uh, we can, maximally protect ourselves because as we've seen you know sometimes even at you know doing the best things you know people can get infected because you know all those flaws may line up as they're showing here so some of these responsibilities are personal and you know they're the ones that we as individuals need to focus on and do and some of them are shared responsibilities which i think we can discuss um, later on so the personal ones um, as we've highlighted are you know physical distancing 
staying home if you are sick, wearing masks, hand hygiene, as in washing hands for 20 seconds with soap and water or using um, hand sanitizers, cough etiquette. So coughing or sneezing into your elbow um, is very important. Avoid touching your face. And I've coined this term, amen. Uh, you know, wear masks, amen. Avoid, whenever you go out, think, avoid my mouth, my eyes and my nose. You know, wear masks, amen, namaste. You know, namaste for greeting. You know, no um, handshaking, no hugging, just namaste. And amen, I want to avoid my eyes, my nose and my mouth and keep saying it and teach your children. And um, if you're in a crowd, limit your time. That's very important. In terms of shared responsibilities, um, we need fast and sensitive testing and tracing um, when people, when cases are identified, uh, you know, um, especially when you look at things like schools opening, uh, you know, organizations and offices need to look at ventilation. They need to look at air filtration um, that we need to have government messaging um, and financial support. And uh, you need to have quarantine and isolation facilities and, of course, you know, um, vaccine developments. So that is a very uh, important way to think about the reason we have to do all of these different things. And remember, the goal is to try and get that reproductive rate um, to less than one, because if one person, if we break the chain of transmission and, you know, uh, one person is not spreading it to, you know, two or three people and they're spreading it to less than one person, the pandemic will stop without a vaccine. That is why uh, these measures are called a behavioural vaccine. And if the collective, if everybody does these measures, as we said, over 80% of people do it, then we can stop this pandemic. So um, in terms of, uh, you know, any public health action, um, prevention is better than cure. In fact, prevention is the cure in terms of COVID. Um, we want to be able to safely navigate this pandemic and we want to be able to prevent ourselves from getting COVID until such time that there is a cure. So, um, as I said, uh, um, you know, our individual responsibility uh, will basically mean that, you know, uh, collectively we will be able to, you know, vaccinate ourselves, um, you know, our, our society from this, um, you know, pandemic. Uh, just if we follow these rules of, you know, social distancing, wearing masks, watching, washing hands and staying home if we're sick. Um, so, um, you know, uh, um, uh, we, uh, one of the previous speakers spoke about, you know, um, culturally appropriate, um, you know, songs or things which can basically help people understand. And um, this is a absolutely a correct idea. And uh, for my previous presentation um, to NIDM, I made this little um, hand washing video, uh, which didn't take me long to do, but because in New Zealand, um, that we were told, we were, you know, educated at the beginning of the pandemic that whenever we wash our hands for 20 seconds, we need to um, sing happy birthday to you twice. Um, and it's very important because, you know, this is fundamental. Um, you need to wash your hands properly. and. And so I, I tried to make a culturally relevant video um, for, you know, for uh, my uh, Indian audience. And so I just wanted to, and, and this, uh, and this sort of video um, could, should be shared widely on, you know, um, on uh, TV channels to educate people how to wash their hands properly and to teach them that they should be humming something so that they don't rush the process. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know if, I mean, you know, uh, anybody, I mean, we can all do with a reminder of how to wash our hands properly. Um, so something like that, I think would be very useful. And as I said, remember to wash your hands and avoid touching your mouth, nose and eyes, because, you know, um, you have to think that that virus, I do not want to allow it to enter and gain access to my cells. Um, and start replicating.
Um, then, of course, is the maintain practical, you know, uh, practice physical distancing while remaining socially connected. So we have many modalities to remain socially connected. Um, you know, although humans love, um, you know, the physical touch, uh, you know, uh, I think one of the reasons India did quite well compared to other countries initially is because we have this in our tradition, you know, we say namaste and that is a very heartfelt a greeting, there is no need for uh, shaking hands um, and, you know, increasing transmission that way. Now, the masks is a very, very important thing. And, you know, you can look at masks as basically like now we're at a stage in the pandemic, particularly in India, where, you know, it's very unlikely um, or feasible that you're going to be doing a lockdown. So the mask is our, you know, personal lockdown. It's our personal lockdown where we're locking down our nose and our mouth. and this is a very, very important tool for people to understand how important it is, because as you can see in this diagram, if two people are wearing a not wearing a mask and one of the persons is infected, there is a 90% risk of transmission in that interaction. Um, whereas if both people are wearing a mask, that risk of transmission falls to one and a half percent. And then if you add in the distancing, it's virtually zero. Um, of course, now we've got this whole aerosol issue where, you know, if even if you've got a mask on and you're in a prolonged uh, period for a prolonged period of time in an enclosed non ventilated room, you still have risk of, um, you know, getting infected. But the important thing to realize is that through wearing this mask, you would have not only reduced your chance of getting the infection, you would have um, reduced your viral load. So, as I explained, that is extremely important. And in fact, um, now that's been proven that um, countries that had mandated mass masking actually reduced their rate of hospitalization. And I'm sure this is what has happened in India as well, because um, this led to more asymptomatic or mild infections because people were getting a lower viral load. So wearing a mask is 100 percent common sense and everybody must do it, but everybody must do it properly. So, you know, masks, they save, they are the single most important tool in this pandemic to save both lives and livelihoods. Because as I said, it will reduce your chance of getting infected. Even if you do get infected, it will mean that your infection will be less severe than had you not been wearing a mask. And it will preserve people's livelihoods, their ability to earn money, because they can still go about and do their business um, because of the fact that they're going around with that personal protective bubble. Now, uh, you know, and, and uh, lockdown. Now, it's very important that your hands must be clean before you, you know, take off or put on your mask um, because you don't want to infect yourself. Um, while you're out and about, do not fiddle with that mask and make sure it covers your nose and your mouth, you know. And, yeah. you know a fabric mask is fine, a three layer cotton fabric mask. Think about the environment. We're talking about waste. It is, we do not want to create another environmental disaster. Um, so, you know, you can use a cloth mask, you can come home, you can take it off and put it for the hot wash, dry it well and have it ready for the next day. Have several. It's fine. They work well. Do not wear uh, a mask doc, with a doc, Dr. Sandhya, uh, we have Dr. Bhargav also joined. So yes. can I request uh, in five minutes uh, to uh, yeah, sure. share your... Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so... And again, uh, we need to take precautions to keep our family home uh, safe in a safe bubble. So keep those ones that, uh, you know, loved ones and elderly in our home safe. So keep our, you know, bubbles small. Now, um, one of the points was that we need to be able to clean and disinfect uh, uh, properly. Again, I have videos on this on my uh, YouTube and on my social media, how to make up uh, correct disinfecting solutions in spray bottles and, you um, how you need to clean the surfaces properly so that we are making sure that we are doing, you know, everything we can to reduce our chances of becoming infected and making sure that our environment is clean. Now, um, the next point I wanted to get on to is, you know, if you actually have COVID, I mean, I know this is about, um, you know, uh, awareness about the behaviours um, for avoiding COVID, but it's also important, I think, to address the fact that a lot of people are getting COVID at the moment, particularly in India, and that if the way you modify your behaviour, if you think you have COVID, will also be a very important 
um, education for everybody um, so that that also will help um, reduce the you know the rate of rise so it's very important if you think you have any viral symptoms and as we're coming into winter people will get even a common cold but rather than thinking oh it's just a cold and I'll go out and it's going to be fine no any viral symptoms you have to assume that you have COVID and you have to stay home and isolate yourself from your family straight away and start wearing a mask because one of the biggest places where COVID is transmitted is in the household. Um, and you are most infectious early. Uh, so, you know, you need to isolate yourself straight away from your family members and, you know, stay home and get tested and seek medical advice and wear, uh, you know, masks and practice strict hygiene at home. So, um, as Professor Kumar mentioned, I uh, recorded a video in um, June uh, for um, my family members um, in India, particularly, and around the world, looking at the situation where basically um, a lot of people were facing where, you know, getting infected with COVID, yet uh, not being able to access testing or hospital level care and a lot of panic. Um, and so this was my disaster management plan um, for how to, you know, stay calm and prepare yourself should the need arise if you or your family members um, were to come down with COVID. And so I um, now uh, have, you know, uh, through the help of, um, through the, you know, massive global response I've received, I think this video has been seen probably in the hundreds of millions of times via a WhatsApp all over the world. Um, I have, you know, uh, you know, been dedicated to this project of getting this advice you know, dubbed in several languages. And now I have it in um, Hindi, Telugu, Tamil, Gujarati, Marathi, Bengali, Punjabi, um, French, Portuguese, um, Spanish, and Russian. Now, apart from Spanish and Russian, I know that all those other languages are spoken in India. I think the other two that I'm working on are Malayalam and Kannada. And in these videos, I basically, in this video, I have basically explained um, the basics of COVID and prevention and how you manage, um, uh, you know, the infection optimally at home and try and prevent a mild infection from becoming severe. And I would, you know, recommend that um, everybody take a look at this video because it will go a long way in helping you feel empowered um, to manage because, you know, the truth is, is that, um, you know, uh, much, you know, better resourced countries are facing this exact circumstances. So assuming if, you know, things go ahead and, you know, and that's why this Jan and um, and, you know, raising awareness and reiterating the importance of behaviours is very important because we do not want to be in the situation where, you know, the health system collapses and the only thing you have to turn to is this video, which has happened to a lot of people. But the good news is a lot of people are getting better following these steps because it's based, what I've done is I've based it on very, very good science and all the evolving evidence as um, supporting all the steps. So, I mean, these were the sort of things that I went through. Now, the point, uh, the first step in my video was talking about um, priming and boosting your immunity. And I wanted to just talk about that in terms of, you know, um, as we head into the festival season um, and, and in terms of long-term risk mitigation uh, against this pandemic is that it's essential that we all work on, you know, building our immunity and a healthy lifestyle. Um, and, and very important uh, in, is to avoid vitamin D deficiency, um, particularly in India, there's, you know, almost universal rates of vitamin D deficiency. And, um, you know, that has been proven to have a very bad outcome uh, if you are infected with COVID. Um, the other thing is, I mean, in, in, in New Zealand and in Australia, and people will look to the Southern Hemisphere and how they've managed to actually manage to get through winter and not done too badly with COVID. You have to understand that these countries have high rates of influenza vaccine, um, which doesn't protect you against COVID, but it protects you from getting a co-infection with the flu and with COVID, which would lead to a bad outcome. So, I mean, that's something for, uh, you know, people in India to think about. There's also, you know, pneumonia vaccines that we give to elderly people. So, um, and, and maintaining a good control of any chronic health conditions you have. And using food as medicine, you know, it's not that you need to pop every single vitamin, but try and focus on a healthy diet with whole foods. And in terms of, you know, the long marathon of COVID, it's very important 
for our immunity that we focus on good mental health and mental resilience. And, you know, the basics of doing that is basically eating well, you know, sleeping well and having a regular routine, exercising regularly, um, staying connected uh, with family and friends um, in a safe way, um, minimizing stress, you know, through yoga, mindfulness, and avoiding, um, you know, uh, alcohol, smoking, drugs, binge eating, all these things which um, will, uh, you know, reduce our ability to fight these, this infection. So this is a very important risk mitigating strategy and um, for the host or for, for us and will help us, um, you know, um, uh, survive this pandemic. So, so these are, you know, the second step in my, you know, video that I describe is um, the importance of reduction in viral load, and as I've explained that, you know, and then I'll talk about um, nasal and throat rinsing with saline and betadine and demonstrate that. And the third thing I talk about is breathing exercises and the prone positioning, which, um, you know, I, I demonstrate balloon uh, blowing, which helps um, simulate what a ventilator does and helps keep your lungs open. Now, particularly, I would bring that these breathing exercises are important and um, I know that the pollution levels are quite high. And I've read also that a lot of people that suffered COVID in the first wave um, in India are now uh, preventing. And Dr. Sandhya, can I request you to kindly uh, sum up so that we can have uh, sure. uh, some of your points yeah. uh, during the yes. question and answer session? Yeah. Just the point with the, I was just saying, okay. I'll just say with the breathing, is that, you know, people that had it, a mild infection initially are now coming up with breathing difficulties post COVID because of pollution. So these breathing exercises are important for everybody. So, you know, in terms of the long term, I'd say, as I said, no herd immunity, you know, we've got to stay calm and carry on with, uh, you know, uh, the precautions and try and avoid reinfection, even if you've already had COVID and that we need to mitigate our risks by basically, you know, following all the rules um, uh, for the, you know, behavioural or social vaccine for COVID, which is wash your hands, watch your distance, wear a mask, and I would add, watch your ventilation. So they're the basic points that I wanted to um, highlight. Uh, thank you, but I would uh, request you to kindly uh, be ready with your video so that we can, uh, at the time of question and answer, I can check up your video as well. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for giving this a uh, very, very informative and very, very illustrative manner, uh, your presentation, especially in the context of Honorable Prime Minister Janan Dolan, where he's talking about that every individual should become responsible and self-reliant when it comes to the management of COVID. And the actions which you have suggested are very, very important for the individual and also becoming an individual uh, kind of a responsible citizen uh, at the time of first season. Uh, I would get back to you, Dr. Sandhya. I'm not concluding no EIG here, but I would like to welcome uh, Professor Balram Bhargav, uh, who is the Secretary Department of Health Research, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, and also Director General of Indian Council of Medical Research. Uh, and uh, Professor Bhargav is also a cardiologist, very, very senior cardiologist at All India Institute of Medical Science. Uh, which is, you know, that uh, All India Institute of Medical Science is widely known as a kind of a, a very good uh, research and uh, treating center as a hospital. And in India, feel always proud and this hospital, that kind of a cases that have been able to handle. Uh, and he's also executive director for Stanford India uh, Biodesign Center, School of International Biodesign. So this is a very, very important uh, uh, scenario when we are into, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, entire scenario uh, that how we are facing with. And when it comes to that, if people are not aware and they get affected, they have to rely on the hospital facilities. And uh, you said, uh, Dr. Sandhya, that uh, uh, don't load hospitals with the kind of, uh, without uh, taking the person you have to have. So I would uh, uh, welcome on behalf of the Ministry of Home Affairs and also on behalf of the National Institute of Disaster Management, National Disaster Authority, uh, to Dr. Uh, Professor Bhargav for uh, uh, giving insight that how India's hospital uh, facilities are prepared uh, at the time of COVID, especially when we are having a lot of, uh, then winter is coming, pollution is an issue, and also uh, then we are talking about festivity. So in this concern, people's behaviors are different. 
So the precaution is at one go and then it happens. So I request you to kindly deliberate upon this. You are welcome here and I request you to kindly uh, give your insights. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, we've had an excellent talk by Dr. Sandhya. What I will uh, talk briefly is about what we have done uh, for this pandemic in the last eight or nine months and how uh, this has pandemic has not uh, uh, respected any country borders and why we have had these pandemics. Now, if you look at this millennium, uh, we've had the pandemics of Zika, uh, the epidemics of Zika, two epidemics of Nipah, we've had SARS, we've had MERS, and now we have had uh, uh, this COVID-19. We're seeing that these uh, epidemics uh, are becoming more uh, frequent, uh, they are becoming more complex. And that is because of the fact that there is a, the change in environment, there is uh, the ecological change, there's rapid urbanization, and there is extreme connectivity between uh, uh, cities and, and, and individuals uh, having too much movement on the globe across. And that is why we probably are seeing, and uh, the expenditure on public health has been uh, uh, very low all across the world, including India and many countries, public health spending has been very low. So, so this remains a problem and, and we will see more such epidemics uh, in the future unless we are able to improve our environment. Having said that, the, the approach that India had done up till now was a, a, a sort of a very uh, proactive, a preemptive and a graded uh, response, which was very calibrated, uh, whole of science, whole of government approval. <laughs> because of a very strong leadership. Uh, we continue to play with the 5T model of test, track, trace, uh, treat, and use of technology. We did not mess around with herd immunity business at all uh, along these eight or nine months that we've had this pandemic. And, and some nations have suffered before because of that, but we took uh, the learnings from uh, those nations and were able to um, not play around with herd immunity. And as we speak, we, we see that the national uh, uh, seroprevalence last month has demonstrated that the uh, seroprevalence is 4% across the country, why, uh, across the urban areas, I mean, sorry, 4% in the rural areas, 8% uh, in the urban areas, and uh, uh, about 15% in urban slums, with a national average of about 7%. And it has increased from 0.7% in March, April, to 7% only. So we definitely, we definitely, we definitely do not believe in herd immunity for this uh, at the moment, clearly. And we will focus on our COVID appropriate behavior. We will focus on the masks, the use of masks and the use of social distancing. The COVID appropriate behavior is inexpensive. It doesn't cost anything. Masks are also very inexpensive and they are as good as nearly as good as any vaccine uh, uh, as we speak. Uh, so so uh, till such time and even beyond the vaccine development and the vaccine uh, production and vaccine avail availability in the country, we will have to use the mask and probably masks will be the last things to go or maybe never go. So that's, that's how I would uh, say. And I'll start with some slides if I can share a presentation. Yeah. Can you see the slides please? Yes, yes, we can see that. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so we, as we speak, we have uh, say about 42 million cases across the world with 1.1 million deaths, and in India is about eight, uh, uh, 79 lakh cases with 1 lakh 21 thousand deaths. And our strategy has been five T's, as I mentioned, test, track, trace, and the use of uh, technology. Now, our principle uh, when we had this epidemic was to have a lab laboratory in every district uh, of India. We had 14 mentoring institutes across the country, and we had the basic prerequisites for the lab, which was a, a calibrated functional RT-PCR and a BDSL-2 with uh, training, which was provided to the molecular virologist, and they had a centrifuge and an autoclave. We also uh, set up labs in difficult terrains in uh, uh, the Northeast, uh, in Andaman Nicobar Islands, in the Lakshadweep, and also Leh Ladakh and Kargil. Uh, so these were areas where we rapidly set up laboratories of RT-PCR. 
Uh, out of the 281 government medical colleges, we passed a gazette notification and were able to get 273 government medical colleges set up labs. Eight, 185 of our private medical colleges have labs. And now, uh, as we speak, we have 650 districts which have, uh, out of the 739 districts, have testing labs, and 89 districts' uh, labs are within uh, six to eight hours. Now, the phase one was the large cities and urban areas where we set up the RT-PCR laboratories, as I spoke. And in the phase two, we set up the molecular assay, which we repurposed the molecular diagnostic uh, uh, true NAT and the CB NAT, which we were using for tuberculosis. Uh, and we repurposed them very rapidly in the month of April. And, and we have uh, the Lancet now uh, uh, talking about these, uh, uh, the, uh, when they talked about the DNA nudge, which the BBC touted in a very big way last month. But we have been using these labs and more than 2,500 such labs are available uh, across the country, and we have done about five percent of the testing with with the with the TrueNet uh, platform. And, and this is more for the district level, where we were not able to establish the RT-PCR labs immediately, and we had those uh, TB laboratories which we repurposed. And then in the field field level, we did the rapid antigen test uh, rapidly in the month of May June, which the WHO approved only last week. But we've been using the rapid antigen tests. Uh, accordingly, and and and, uh, and and now the United States has also started using the rapid antigen tests uh, with a sensitivity of anywhere between 70 to 80, 85 uh, percent. As we can see that we have validated uh, at the beginning of the pandemic in the month of March, uh, we used to get the RT-PCR kits from abroad. Uh, much of them were imported and the cost was about 2000 rupees uh, per test. Uh, subsequently, we have validated and our startups have developed more than a thousand, more than a thousand, as I speak, RT-PCR kits, uh, RNA extraction kits, as well as the VTMs, and the costs have dropped to 138 rupees uh, for uh, the RT-PCR uh, kit and 91 and 94 rupees respectively for the VTM and the RNA extraction kits. So it's about 300 rupees for an RT-PCR test in our country at the moment, and we have uh, uh, validated a large number of these kits, and they have now. Being, they are now being exported to many parts of, of, uh, of Europe as well as Africa, and, and, then, and the country is self-sufficient in producing these kits. And, and the same has happened for uh, personal protective equipment and masks. We are exporting them on a, on a, a large scale now. We had the, uh, the accreditation centers, and we had a 30 QC, uh, QC laboratories, which were maintaining the QC QA uh, for all these laboratories the 2,040 laboratories uh, that we have across the country, which we have set up in these eight or nine months. The beginning uh, uh, in January, we just had the one lab, which was the National Institute of Virology, and subsequently we have uh, scaled it up uh, to uh, uh, 2,040 laboratories in the country. During the lockdown, we, again, here I would emphasize that the lockdown in India was a very, uh, very practical sort of a lockdown where we didn't have uh, something like many countries in Europe where the lockdown was absolutely ineffective as well as in the, in the US, uh, the lockdown was not effective at all. Uh, and then the, the other end of the spectrum was the, the Chinese lockdown, which is really a very strong sort of a lockdown. So ours was somewhere in the middle path. Uh, and, and during the lockdown, we had uh, the, uh, from March 24 to May 31st, we had the Ministry of Civil Aviation and Indian Air Force uh, with the Niti Aayog and the Ministry of Railways, the Indian Postal Services, and the Department of Personnel Training, uh, launched a mission where they were carrying uh, uh, kits uh, to all the laboratories 24/7. Uh, there were night flights, there were special flights, uh, Air India uh, flights, uh, and also helicopters of the Indian Air Force taking equipment, laboratory equipment, and this all happened on 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 like a, a war war sort of a mission. And the Indian Council of Medical Research worked. 24-7 for the last six, seven months to really set up these uh, laboratories and special flights were commissioned to uh, ensure timely delivery. Now, if you look at the number of tests that have been carried out, uh, today we have the capacity of 1.2 million tests per day. We are second only to the United States in terms of the total number of tests. Uh, and, and we have uh, gradually uh, from January when we were doing 10 tests a day, uh, we went up to 1,000 in March and 95,000 in May. And in October, we had about uh, 1.2 million tests per day. Um, and as you can see how the total number of labs and the total number of tests has uh, gradually escalated over the months. 
our testing strategy was also calibrated depending on the availability of the labs. Uh, uh, in February, we were just testing travelers. Then in March, it was tra travelers, healthcare workers, Saudi patients, and contacts. And then subsequently, we had clusters, ILI. We also did pooled testing. Wherever the uh, positivity rate was less than 2%, we allowed pool testing, and therefore this helped us tremendously in the rural areas to do pool testing. And subsequently, we did hospitalized patients, immunocompromised, pre-surgery, and, 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 and since last month, I think we have testing available really on, on demand. And the turnaround time for RT-PCR test is 90% uh, within, uh, within 24 hours. We have a dashboard for demand for uh, forecasting uh, for every state. Uh, this was launched in April of 2020, uh, where we had a stock out of status, lab requirements, suggestive dispatch quantities, and this was uh, all across the country. We had 20 ICMR national depots, which were set up in the 20 national institutes uh, for distribution of testing commodities across uh, like a mission project. And we had the data entry portal, which is the, the, the uh, and we completed 100 million tests uh, uh, last, uh, 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 last month. And, and this has uh, helped us in disease trends, policy making, resource planning, as well as uh, clinical decision making. Uh, and uh, the capacity of assessment of labs and matching procedures, streamlining of purchasing, uh, including testing commodities, tendering platforms, and having all these commodities now available on the global e-market uh, was done uh, again with uh, analyzing the laboratories, the types of stock mix, the types of machines that they have, the manpower, the number of shifts they had, the operating hours that they were um, doing. We uh, Again, in the month of April, we developed the ELISA. We isolated the virus, uh, virus whether we were the fifth country to isolate the virus uh, in the month of March. And uh, we developed the ELISA test in uh, the month of April, and we used it for carrying out the, uh, the national, the largest uh, sero survey of 30,000 people across the country in 70 uh, districts and 700 villages. This was done in April, and we had a prevalence percentage of 0.7% at that time. Subsequently, we also have uh, released three issues of the Indian Journal of Medical Research, which has three dedicated volumes of uh, all publications, which were from India and uh, the neighboring country countries uh, on, on the uh, research as well as the clinical profile as well as uh, the testing methods. We issued advisories, uh, letters to all stakeholders and press briefings, and we uh, made a national task force which was uh, responsible for calibration of testing strategy, advised the government on lockdowns and containment strategies. We developed advisories, provide oversight on ongoing, ongoing research, recommend required clinical trials, develop clinical management protocols, and exp uh, uh, explore newer and repurposed treatment options. Um, in terms of the vaccine, we entered into an MOU with the Bharat Biotech, and uh, we the strain was transferred to the Bharat Biotech. They developed the COVAX vaccine, and this vaccine was tested in preclinical studies uh, in small and large animals, uh, uh, including non-human primates, and the phase one and phase two trials are completed, and the phase three trials for this vaccine have started. And the clinic, we are also planning to uh, start the clinical trials in neighboring countries of Bangladesh and, and Myanmar and other, other countries for this phase three for this vaccine. This is the preclinical trial, which is uh, in the press in Nature, uh, Nature Communications. And uh, this is, uh, we uh, used, uh, we found excellent safety profile in all the three species, high neutralizing titers at three and six micrograms, and also good TH1 based antibody response. Uh, well, at, at uh, day, day, day 28 in, in, in mice, rats, and rabbits. The same study, a similar study was conducted in hamsters, and they were sacrificed on day 65. And, and we found that they had a robust humoral response. And this is in, uh, in science and cell and press is under review there. And an excellent TH1 immune response in group three and group four, uh, where we had three and uh, six micrograms with adjuvant B. Uh, and a rapid viral clearance in the lower and uh, upper respiratory tract. Uh, in these hamsters. We also did uh, uh, another study at the uh, National Institute of Virology in Pune on non-human primates. This was done uh, again 24 seven experiments going on at 1 p.m. at night uh, 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 with uh, the vaccine doses being given at day zero, day 14, day 28, and necropsy at day 35. And the blood, nasal, throat, rectal, bronchial, villa lavage, urine, stool, and organs were all collected, histopathology, 
and uh, stainings, and we found very good neutralizing antibodies with helper T cell response in group three and group four with complete viral clearance from all body fluids and organs on day 35 in group three and four. This is under review in Nature Communications. And so, uh, then we completed the phase one clinical trial, which started in the month of July, uh, and uh, uh, 375 participants, and we found, uh, again, excellent neutralizing antibodies with safety and uh, good immune response and T1 responses. And the phase two trial also is complete. Uh, the, uh, the second dose has been given and the blood samples have been collected and being analyzed. And within a week's time, we will have the results of the phase two. The phase one paper is under review in the Lancet and uh, the phase three trial starts uh, this week uh, and in, in 26 centers, uh, 26,000 patients uh, uh, for this vaccine. We have partnered with the Serum Institute, the Oxford vaccine, and uh, they have completed their 1600 phase 2B3 last week, uh, the first dose of the vaccination. The second dose will be the end of this month. And we also have developed our vaccine, national vaccine platform, which has all the data on what the vaccine uh, are available, are going to be available and are being tested in India. Uh, in terms of the role of BCG, we have completed a study on 1,400 patients, uh, participants, 1180 have been completed, but as we speak, uh, 1,400 participants have been enrolled. Some of them, about 100 of them had completed uh, one month and their blood samples were collected to measure their immune response and we found excellent uh, uh, immune response with BCG in the elderly above the age of 60 uh, and 80 and uh, 60 to 80. And we will be looking at their follow-up at uh, uh, at six months in terms of their benefit in COVID. We have developed equine CIDA, uh, equine hyperimmunoglobulin, and this is in a private-public partnership with biological events. And uh, we have got approval for phase one uh, clinical trial for these uh, CIDA, which were inoculated in the horse and collected after 21 days. And then the Pieranti and ELISA assay was done. And subsequently the, the pepsin uh, digestion for purification of the fat fragment of the, of the uh, antibodies. The, uh, as we look at the randomized trial across the world, uh, we have not much to speak except the recovery trial from the United Kingdom, which has clearly shown that steroids benefit in, uh, um, in uh, COVID-19. The, the solidarity trial from the WHO has shown that remdesivir is not working that well. And then we have the, one, uh, 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 the, the largest trial uh, across the the, uh, in, in across the world on convalescent plasma across 39 hospitals and with 350 uh, scientists with 464 adults randomized to convalescent plasma. And this was published in the British Medical Journal, which clearly showed that convalescent plasma is not working in moderate to severe cases or preventing moderate to severe cases. And this was published on 22nd October. And the editorial clearly says that the bar of uh, the science that India has published has been raised across the world in, in this COVID pandemic, clearly congratulating the fact that uh, how, how trials can be done rapidly during a lockdown from 24th April to 14th July, the randomization was done rapidly. Again, 24 seven people were working till 4 a.m. at night uh, 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 and, and, and having VCs with different hospitals and, and doing this trial. We conducted the uh, uh, one tenth of the WHO solidarity trial was from India out of the 30 country trial. And this has clearly demonstrated that uh, remdesivir uh, uh, and lopinavir interferon have little and no effect on mortality. And this is still in preprint and is not yet uh, published. And these were the sites all across India, which uh, were managed by our National Institutes of AIDS Research across because, uh, because of the network of our 26 institutes. We had deputed each one of our institutes for, with the responsibility of completing each one of these uh, projects on a, on a war footing. We did the National COVID Zero Survey. We had done two of them, the largest ones. And uh, they, the first one was in, uh, uh, in uh, May, June, and the second one was in August, September. The number of participants was 24,000 and 28,000. And we clearly demonstrated in the first zero survey, the zero prevalence was 0.7%. And in the second zero survey, it was 6.6% across the country with 4% uh, uh, with, uh, 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 in urban, uh, rural areas and 7% in urban areas and eight, uh, about 15% in urban slums. 
Subsequently, different cities, different states have done their various uh, sero surveys, and none of them is, is hitting uh, um, between uh, up to 20 or 25 percent. Uh, so, and Delhi is the highest, probably 27 percent to 28 percent. The three sero surveys is now talking about 27 percent. So, we are far, far, far away from herd immunity, and, and this paper of our sero civil uh, prevalence is uh, in uh, uh, Press and Lancet Global Health. And uh, the reinfections, we looked at the reinfection data because we have now uh, the data of 100 million tests available, and we are churning the data to get out what we can in terms of reinfection, in terms of uh, uh, other clinical presentations, uh, correlation with uh, the air pollution, correlation with uh, the festivals, etc. And And we have found that we had 40 cases of reinfection in the ICMR database, and this has been sent for publication in JAMA. In terms of newer initiatives, we have the biorepositories across the country, uh, and we have a clinical COVID registry, which is uh, the uh, which is being uh, strung around with 15 mentor institutes across the country, and each mentor institute has three to five hospitals. So at the moment, we have about 50 hospitals feeding all the data uh, in in the registry in the format that we have described. So this will, will have enough data available for us in terms of the clinical registry. So we have had partnership with the Department of Biotechnology, Department of Science Technology, CSIR, Ayush, and the MHRDs for validation of diagnostics kits, for antiviral screening, uh, for Ayush uh, regimens, for validation of devices, textile products, mobile applications, getting labs, biorepositories, indigenous vaccines, and diagnostics. And we have, uh, it, it has been a, a, a government approach straight from the cabinet secretary and the empowered groups with the National Task Force and the Ministry of Health and the various stakeholders uh, 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 which have worked uh, rapidly towards uh, this, uh, uh, this pandemic. Now here, important point to stress is that uh, we would like to emphasize that during this festival season, we are going to have festivals, we are going to have the cold, uh, the virus likes the cold, we have air pollution, we have people uh, who would be returning from uh, 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 countries, uh, I mean, from the neighboring states where elections have been held, and we also have the marriage season. So that is an, a, a worrisome part, particularly for Delhi. Although the country has shown a downward trend uh, since uh, October, the downward trend has uh, gone down from 95,000 cases to about 45,000 cases uh, per day, but uh, uh, cities, uh, major uh, populations like Delhi, West Bengal, and Kerala are still on the rise, and that is the worrisome uh, aspect. And therefore, till such time we have a vaccine, and even beyond, we have to continue with our COVID-appropriate behavior and the use of uh, masks at uh, at every every level, and absolutely non-essential travel and non-essential uh, meeting should absolutely be avoided, and and we should try to meet as much as possible on 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 BC. Thank you so much for your attention and I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Bhargav. Uh, we have received a couple of questions uh, during your deliberations also. And also Dr. Sandhya with uh, you. One question which is very pertinent, which is coming up uh, as a kind of a festive season and you talked about uh, this uh, vaccine uh, second stage and third stage. One question has come up on by likely put off coming of this live vaccine into practice when you are expecting that a country should get the confidence that yes vaccine would be there so this is one question i will just tell you two three questions so that you can uh, group and then you can respond accordingly second question is coming up this uh, especially uh, when you highlighted about delhi and they are talking about the delhi uh, uh, one is this temperature and uh, obviously parali uh, uh, this uh, 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 pollution so in the in the context of the two and the third which you have highlighted that people coming from there is a high infection areas or the, this uh, Bihar and other places. Uh, so how uh, the, uh, the you advise people what Dr. Sandhya has said and the preventive measures, or if not, then how the hospitals are uh, hospital readiness uh, to take care of those. And the last question uh, which uh, to, uh, at this moment is. Uh, it's very really strange that uh, uh, we do not have the treatment, but still uh, we have the 93% plus uh, kind of a recovery rate. How it is possible? Uh, these three uh, uh, things are uh, 
or the floor of the people just to know from you. Sure. Thank you so much. I think uh, in terms of the first question regarding the vaccine, we have completed the phase two of the trial. Many countries have approved after phase two, whether it be Russia, whether it be China and other countries uh, are, have approved the use of vaccine under emergency use authorization for specific conditions, uh, whether it be hospital workers or frontline workers. So that has been done in certain countries. And I do not know what the government stand will be and how the company will apply for, whether they will apply for emergency use authorization or not would depend uh, uh, on, 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 on in the near, very near future. In terms of the phase three trials for the, uh, the, uh, the, the Covaxin ICMR uh, trial, which will be, the, which has started this month, we will not have results for the phase three completion by the March or so, February or March, we should have the results. Before that, we should have the phase three trials of the Oxford vaccine by December. And, 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 and what the important thing to remember is that the phase one and the phase two have clearly established the safety. They have clearly established the immunogenicity, but they have not established the efficacy. And efficacy of a vaccine is only established by a phase three. And the WHO has also said that the efficacy of above 50% is acceptable for a, for a, vac for a vaccine. Now, coming back to the point of Delhi, in terms of Delhi, we are going to, we are, uh, the air pollution remains a big, a big problem. And as we know, the largest killers across the world uh, 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 in, from the global burden of disease data is, one is uh, malnutrition, number two is high blood pressure, number three is tobacco use, and number four is air pollution. So we know that it is one of the top four killers across the world. So air pollution remains a huge concern. And there have been some studies from Italy uh, in certain areas of lockdown in Italy and certain areas of uh, high pollution in Italy, where they have clearly demonstrated that air pollution was closely linked to the COVID-19 mortality. There was a study from the Howard Chan Institute in Boston, which has also shown that they have found the virus particles in, in, in the air pollution particles. Now, these particles, whether they are just the RNA of the virus or they are the actual live virus is not being demonstrated. It's, it's probably RNA particles, which are also there, uh, they have found in the, um, uh, as we find in the sewage, which are not harmful, but uh, they have shown that they can also uh, go there. The last point uh, regarding hospital readiness is concerned for Delhi. The hospital readiness is, is there. But as we are seeing during this month, uh, when the cases are rising in Delhi, we are seeing a negative balance of about 150 to 200 beds every day for Delhi. Although Delhi is prepared for more than 15 to 20,000 beds uh, in terms of uh, um, uh, admissions, and there are certain COVID centers as well, which have been created and are still 40%, 50% utilized at the moment. So we do have uh, plenty of facilities available. But the last question that you asked about in terms of treatment, when we have no treatment available, we clearly have two or three treatments which are well established. Uh, one uh, is the use, once you get COVID, the treatments that are available are the use of steroids or cortisone, the use of oxygen, they have both been reduced mortality, and the use of uh, blood thinners uh, uh, or antithrombotics. Uh, those, these three have shown to be beneficial in, and these all three are inexpensive and available in India in plenty from that perspective. The last point that I want to emphasize is that we have to use masks and COVID appropriate behavior to prevent from getting the disease. We have to prevent the paranoia, the stigma and the fatigue and, and concentrate on, uh, on COVID appropriate behavior in every sphere of life. And I wish everyone all the best. Uh, I think the Delhi government with the Disaster Management Authority is working extensively in terms of the hospitals, in terms of the facilities. And, and these, since we have had the first, uh, uh, first spike in June and we had a second spike in August, September. So Delhi is, is getting ready for the third spike, which is, uh, as we speak, slightly higher than the second spike. And, and therefore, uh, we have repeatedly been planning accordingly and the Delhi government with the help of the central government has been working on, on that in every which way. The population of Delhi is two crores, uh, which is uh, really equivalent to uh, any 
uh, country in Europe. So, so from that perspective, we have to be very, very careful and, and uh, still, uh, still maintain COVID appropriate behavior and the use of the masks. Thank you so much. Uh, so, so be before I go to Dr. Sandhya, one more question I would like to have, and then we'll have Dr. Sandhya's response on what you have suggested about appropriate behavior is the solution at this point of time. Uh, like uh, when we talk about this, uh, the health facilities and uh, COVID has demonstrated uh, that you said that negative uh, uh, rate we have uh, in terms of infrastructure availability. Now in the uh, context of uh, any planning uh, to strengthen the public infrastructure in terms of public health facilities, like India still have a point uh, six or 7% of the GDP uh, total expenditure on the health. And uh, also that bed availability, which we say is uh, in India is uh, much less is 0.70 per uh, thousand person, and uh, which is uh, much lower than even Maldives, Bhutan and Nepal. So uh, in the, in the, uh, which you said that the kind of population which we have and the kind of challenges which we have faced, and uh, my compliment uh, to all your efforts and the government which is taking up since March till date, a lot of improvement which has come up in terms of treatment facilities and, uh, uh, and all this uh, kind of a preparedness and uh, vaccine testing and all. So how do you say as a kind of a futuristic plan for India uh, when we talk about pandemic like this? Uh, you're absolutely right. Actually, we had the advantage of starting late uh, in March and therefore India with the lockdown was able to ramp up its healthcare facilities, whether it be hospital beds, whether it be oxygen, whether it be PPEs, whether it be testing. And that happened very, very rapidly as a all of our government approach directly monitored by the cabinet secretary mm -hmm. office and, and on, on, on a daily basis. So that was uh, probably the reason why we were able to uh, maintain and, and uh, ramp up our facilities. Your point regarding our GDP is definitely a point of concern. We are. We have a GDP of one percent for healthcare in our country, and the global and the expand is about four uh, percent across the country. But we do not want to uh, look at the United States of America, where the GDP for healthcare is nineteen percent of a nineteen trillion dollar economy, which is larger than India's economy, and still they are not able to provide healthcare for all. Uh, uh, so we need to have frugal, low cost innovations learn a lot from uh, the, the NHS system in the United Kingdom, which has, uh, uh, although which has been a student uh, 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 in order after the Second World War and has done well, although it is becoming more and more Americanized now with too much of uh, uh, unnecessary expenditure uh, in the, even in the NHS, I think uh, we need to remain grounded, remain low cost, not, not create a paranoia, not over uh, over um, over invest on healthcare and, and the, um, uh, 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 I would say more in uh, uh, we have to invest on the basic infrastructure of healthcare rather than trying to glamorize it uh, overtly by by use of too much of technology. I agree, some technology will be required, has to be used, uh, particularly in telemedicine, etc. But uh, uh, we should be very careful in. Uh, spending and the government has emphasized that by 2025 it will uh, definitely touch 2.5 percent of the GDP, which is huge. We have the capacity to absorb that, and we have seen that happen during this uh, this pandemic. That uh, oxygen generation plants have been set up in medical colleges, laboratories have been set up in these uh, 600 medical colleges across the country. Uh, the, the the beds have been increased. So from that perspective, the government is very clearly focused on improving the health infrastructure uh, rapidly and on a rapid phase. Uh, I, I, the point, the data that is always touted that we have 0.7 doctors per thousand population and all those issues are definitely there. But uh, the, 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 the National Medical Council has been formed. The Medical Council has worked uh, day and night tirelessly to improve the uh, number of medical colleges and rapidly they have increased to 560 across uh, the country. The district general hospitals are also being uh, utilized for training, and uh, they are also being ramped up. Oxygen plants are being set up in district hospitals uh, by the government so that oxygen generation can happen. So I think a lot is happening, and I we we feel that this uh, uh, pandemic has uh, been responsible for uh, the point that we always talk that the healthcare is uh, not funded well. Uh, a lot has has changed in these nine months, and I am sure 
uh, we are going to have much, much more uh, more focus on healthcare in the country, with India playing a major role uh, for globally, not in the Southeast Asia region, but for Africa and, 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 and also globally. Uh, uh, as we speak, one out of six doctors uh, in the world are of Indian origin. I think the same number is for the nurses across the world. 60% uh, of the generic drugs are of Indian origin across the world. So, so from that perspective, India is, is, is uh, very well positioned to, uh, uh, I would say, carpe diem or seize this opportunity clearly in terms of uh, 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 being one of the global leaders for healthcare. Thank you so much. So, so, what, what wonderful narration and uh, my compliment to you regarding uh, the initiatives taken by the government of India, especially healthcare. One last question about this uh, appropriate behavior from your side, and Dr. Sandhya would reflect a little on that uh, this issue. Uh, that uh, people get panicked. Uh, you said that panic and paranoid uh, uh, behavior should be avoided, and uh, people are taking many actions on their own. Uh, whenever the WhatsApp universities uh, suggest that vitamin D should be taken, vitamin C should be taken, and they start looking for different kind of a tablets and medicine in the market. What do you suggest the larger audience, whether this behavior is appropriate or this is not? I would uh, clearly say that, uh, and I've I clearly told you that uh, COVID appropriate behavior doesn't cost anything. The route, wear of wearing a mask, washing your hands and remaining at a distance and over, not overcrowding. And as uh, Sandhya has clearly mentioned that ventilation uh, needs to be very well ta uh, taken care of. Because uh, uh, what we have seen in the last 15 or 20 years, that many buildings in this country are being made air conditioned. Their ceiling are being lowered down by the engineers clearly saying that uh, it will be more cost effective if the ceilings are lowered down and therefore preventing the natural ventilation in a large number of our buildings. So we need to be very clear about that. We need to maintain the ventilation in buildings, particularly uh, um, uh, most parts of India are warm. Uh, we do see three or four seasons in North, Northern India. Uh, so we need to realize that eight or nine months of the country are warm. So, and we need to have good ventilation. You can also argue that when uh, the, the air pollution remains a, a, a huge issue. And, and for that, I think uh, the government uh, is, with the parliament is taking a whole of government approach in terms of the Ministry of Urban Development, as well as environment, as well as health, on looking at uh, areas where we could uh, uh, catch hold of the low hanging fruits, uh, prevent stubble burning, reduce the number of cars, uh, uh, resort to clean, cleaner fuels like um, um, electrical and, and much subsidies for biofuels, etc., has also happened uh, in the country. So uh, we are seeing, uh, that as we saw a CNG revolution, the, the beginning, uh, the end of last century, we will see more of uh, solar and other cleaner fuels being ut utilized. Uh, um, uh, um, in, in the country. But here I would like to emphasize in terms of our carbon footprint, India's carbon footprint, despite the large population is still much, 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 much lower than many developed countries, including the United States of America. And if you look at the Paris Accord, as well as the Doha Accord, uh, our, 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 the, the India is, is, is ready to sign that. And many uh, developed nations are not because their carbon footprint is huge. And, and we, uh, as a nation, if we speak, we have excellent forests we have, uh, we have excellent forests in India and we should maintain the ecology, we should maintain the environment. We, we if I were to say we are somewhere uh, in between Africa and America or Africa and Europe with the, with the same amount of development as Europe and America and the same amount of beautiful forests and wildlife in India uh, as Africa. So, and we, 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 we are definitely blessed from that perspective. Uh, thank you very much. I would request uh, to kindly stay with us for 10 more minutes. Uh, wonderful narratives you have given in terms of that India's position. One is that becoming a global leader on this and also reflecting much on that. Uh, 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 this concerted efforts by all the ministries and the department together, not in an isolated category of that only health, but also looking holistically. And don't copy the Western model of uh, housing or a uh, low ventilated kind of infrastructure. A wonderful uh, thing, and Dr. Sandhya, what is to be, uh, Dr. Bhagav had mentioned many things, and then he said that uh, uh, about this uh, hospital constraints and also that uh, the readiness of the hospital. 
and also about the vaccine and the uh, challenges he also plug, uh, plugged in in terms of that uh, uh, the monsoon and also that uh, the winter season and people in flux from the uh, from a, a election areas to delhi and all so what would be now in this condition that uh, hospital when you get treated uh, well when you are severity and then what would be the appropriate behavior people should follow in the context which uh, professor bhargav has highlighted uh, to be taken care of so what is your take on this that uh, people should not face hospital at all rather than having the, he said that it's a no cost or low cost kind of a so dr sandhya what is to uh, the questions which i have raised to professor bhargav you can reflect upon that also dr sandhya uh, um thank you uh, professor kumar um thank you dr bhargav actually um it was very good um, for me, uh, you know, living in New Zealand and with a large family in India and getting all sorts of, you know, conflicting views. And I have, you know, obviously doctors in the family as well. And, you know, um, you know, the highlight for me from all of that was the statement regarding the zero prevalence, um, because, you know, all I hear is Kiha India herd mentality. It's going on the herd mentality, which is absolutely incorrect and and you know it's that whole you know the biggest um challenge and the reason you need this campaign is because you know indians they said like you know chalega, chalega, you know um uh, you know god will take care and um and you know in fact um uh, uh was it uh, the other doctor who was mentioning you know you know, it, we've just had the, you know, Ramlila season and whether the cultural things could, um, you know, help uh, pe people understand. One thought I had actually is that, you know, Diwali is coming and everybody, every, you know, Hindu is so proud that, you know, uh, Lord Ram spent 14 years in exile and, you know, abstained for 14 years. And here we're barely, you know, if you think India went into lockdown in March, we're not even a year. And people have given up. So where is that cultural, you know, thing within Indians uh, culturally, uh, you know, which is in, not in a lot of, uh, you know, Western cultures, we have that, you know, we have inbuilt within us that, you know, idealism of the importance of abstinence and behavior change for the greater good. However, due to uh you know um urbanization uh, you know western influences uh, you know social media cons uh, you know consumption and you know um disregard for our traditions is that we have lost sight of the importance of abstinence and i mean if you want to i think this is the ideal time to launch this campaign and say you know really in in the big scheme of things you know, our generation is incredibly lucky because this is the first massive event we've had to face. Whereas if we look at our grandparents' generation, they had one event after the other. How did they cope? You know, nobody talked about suicide rates back then. And actually a lot of countries that, you know, they in fact put this paranoia in people that, oh my God, if you lock down, if you do these things, you'll make people you know, depressed and suicide will go up. I mean, why put that thought into people's minds? I know in many countries and even Victoria just now, I saw after one of the harshest lockdowns for, you know, 116 days or so, I saw actually the uh, the statistics, there was no increase in suicide rate. Yes, the mental toll is there. And that's why I highlighted the whole mental resilience. And in fact, alongside doing that video, which I mean, it took me by surprise. I recorded that video for my family. I mean, why should I, a GP in New Zealand, be talking on this platform? It's because of that video. It's because I realized that nobody is empowering individuals and giving them useful advice as to how to look after themselves in a scientific, simply explained, practical context. And the fact is people all over the world, in fact, even I've had people respond that, you know, I took my, you know, 14-year-old son with COVID to my doctor and pediatrician in Texas, and they gave me your video to follow. So the point is, simple information resonates. People, the, the, the reason my video did well is I explained the why. And as I explained, you know, Dr. Bloomfield, Dr. Ashley Bloomfield, you know, who's a national hero in New Zealand, 
he said the profound statement that basically for any public health action to be effective and even clinical action, people need to understand why. And I think this is one thing that India should learn because, you know, a lot of the, you know, a lot of doctors have learned, have come back to me and said, you know, from you, I've learned how to communicate. I think a lot of people came out with videos after mine because, you know, um, people, you cannot prescribe and in any, um, uh, you know, behaviour modification or any clinical treatment without explaining to people why. So otherwise that, you know, they will not comply. So exactly the same way, if you are going to say that, you know, you need to, uh, you know, c carry on masks, and the truth is masks will be the last thing to go, exactly 100%, as you said. And masks, you know, that there's, um, uh, you know, the Dr Monica Gandhi, in um, uh, the US has done amazing studies which showed this um, uh, feature of variolation that the mask is actually like a vaccine itself because not only does it protect you it reduces um, the you know severity of an infection so where Dr Bhargava talked about that um, WHO has said that a vaccine is permissible the phase three tests the efficacy efficacy of the vaccine but um, even a 50% effective vaccine will be approved. Now, wearing a mask is more than um, more effective than a 50% effective vaccine. So masks itself is a vaccine. So I, that little cartoon that I made, which I wanted uh, the government to use, is I have explained from the beginning the science and that the whole world in that tree, every individual's action affects that on that tree, if one person stops, you, you know, prevent that many infections and you break the chain. Same if you reduce the viral load by even one particle, exact same diagram. I mean, this was by a very gifted, he's actually my, you know, come, uh, you know, I actually met him personally. Um, uh, Toby Morris came up with this um, genius, uh, you know, tree diagram, which is actually being used by WHO because one of the strengths of the New Zealand response is the excellent scientific communication in very simple visual terms um, that helped people understand. So what Professor uh, Dr. Bloomfield said is when the you know Prime Minister got up and said the uh, country is going to go into alert level four within two days, nobody asked why. They said we get it, we understand, and they complied. And and the message the message he said he said actually that the the best definition of leadership is that leadership is a collective call to action. And that is what this Janandolan is. It's a collective call to action. And, you know, there is power in that collective action, basically. Um, and, you know, so so basically um, that's why, uh, you know, and, and, the, and the, the message that went out in New Zealand was um, be, um, you know, stay home, um, you know, stay safe, be kind, they very they put a lot of stress on be kind, and um, they said look after each other. They didn't say look after yourself. They said, you know, stay home, be kind, look after each other. And on every single media channel, twenty four seven, that message would be played. And that you know, and and it was one message alone. So I think one of the biggest things that um, you know, uh, if this campaign is to be successful is people have to also highlight that there is going to be no herd immunity. There is no such thing. Everybody in India thinks, like even doctors I've spoken to in India, think, uh, India got the herd, herd immunity. I'm like, it's not. You know, I mean, to get herd immunity, you need um, over 80% of the population to have, uh, you know, antibodies. And we don't even know yet. We've had cases of, you know, you, you mentioned 40 cases of reinfection, you know, again, and, and, so, so there's no guarantee, unfortunately. Um, we don't know how things are going to play out, what we can only work on. And, and what is the point? What is the point of sitting and constantly telling ourselves there will be a vaccine? How does that help me today if I get infected? How does that help me? You know, so that's the point. Protect yourself now. And when the vaccine comes, it will come. But until such time, these are the only three things you've got to remember. Um, wear a mask. Watch your distance, wash your hands, do it properly. And now you're heading into winter, watch the ventilation. So, yeah.
I can hear you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, because uh, you said that let the vaccine uh, take its own time. But in the meanwhile, you just trust on the vaccine, which is available in terms of masks, in terms of washing hands, in terms of maintaining social distancing, and staying at home, and also hearing each other. These are the vaccines to be propagated for the Jan Andolan, which Honorable Prime Minister has said. And what uh, Professor Bhargav has mentioned, in terms of that, uh, the clinical uh, sense of uh, and uh, the strength of India as in terms of not only in India, but side by side also helping other uh, community, global community in terms of providing treatment and vaccine and also that uh, in research and collective uh, uh, kind of a concerns. So uh, if we combine the two and we say that one is this, uh, uh, Professor Bhatto also reiterated your point, what you are saying, that uh, probably uh, this is no cost or low cost kind of a solution which we need to adopt rather than just bet, uh, banking the battle of uh, COVID and uh, ba banking on the hospital uh, care. That is a different story. We have gone very high, but still uh, he's saying that go on a preventive mode, what you have suggested. So uh, it's a uh, wonderful, I would just take a last punchline from both of you. Uh, um, before I request Major General Bintal to say final words, uh, Professor Varga, would you like to say something uh, which is a takeaway that how uh, this uh, campaign of Janandolan on the Prime Minister has said about this, uh, about the appropriate behavior uh, where NIDM and NDMA and the Ministry of Home Affairs can carry forward with ICMR and other institutions, uh, disaster management and the medical association together. Professor Varga. Thank you. I think uh, this uh, Jan Andolan is uh, uh, gradually catching its speed and gradually being percolated uh, across the country. We've had some several icons speak for it. We've had the uh, the Prime Minister launch it and, and he has spoken about it on his monkey bath. He took a, a sudden session at 6 p.m. sudden uh, address to the nation. So from that perspective, I think this Andolan is uh, going to be uh, effective. The other point I want to emphasize here is that India is a very young democracy. We're only 70 years old democracy. So we still are far more open to being guided. Uh, we are not that democratized in every way that we will do what we feel like. Uh, like many countries who are 200 years old democracies, 300 years old democracies, their liberalization is we are definitely uh, much young, and from that perspective, it is easier to train, uh, easier to direct, and easier to channelize. And, and, and this Jana Nolan will be probably uh, will be the most effective thing uh, for this pandemic, and and and, uh, and and an opportunity for India to demonstrate to the world uh, how it can be done, as as we did for the lockdown, uh, in terms of uh, it being a very uh, moderate, balanced calibrated lockdown. Similarly, this Jan Nandolan, if it is very calibrated and 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 and, and I'm sure and it is very timely, so so this will be very effective if, if it is given more wings. All the best for that. Despite of this that Indian democracy and that kind of uh, the we have the kind of a social behavior. Uh, if I read between the lines, uh, maybe I can say that still panel provision is needed to actually guide the people if they don't uh, go for the appropriate behavior. Uh, what uh, General Bindal also highlighted in his uh, opening remark. Uh, Dr. Sandhya, uh, what is your last punchline, which you'd like to say what uh, Professor Bhargo has mentioned here? Your I, would say, I would say simply that collective knowledge is power and that collective action is powerful. Thank you very much. Collective knowledge is power and collective uh, move is also action. Kind of action. Collective action is powerful. So powerful. that's what the Janandolan should be. Give the people uh, knowledge. Empower yes. them. Thank you very much for, uh, for underlining these two words, collective power, collective wisdom, collective knowledge, which is going collective to actually knowledge, make it. Connective. There is no power in the collective without the knowledge. Without the knowledge. So, so that the job that. of the the job of the the job of the authorities is to provide the knowledge in an easy to consume, simple, 
and um, you know, uh, accessible manner for the common man. Thank you, thank you very much uh, for giving this insight. And uh, before I formally thank you, I request uh, General Bindal to uh, give his remarks uh, uh, on the entire deliberations which happened. Then uh, take away. Uh, General Bindal, please, Executive Director of NID. Thank you, Professor Santosh. Uh, so much has been said that it is not possible to some. Uh, uh, such great uh, amount of insight has been brought in by Dr. Sandhya about what to do and how to do. And uh, the steps, positive steps taken by the Indian government as given by Dr. Balram, uh, they are a big motivator by itself. And this YouTube video, once we upload it on our social media website and a lot of people will be watching it, uh, thousands of people will be watching it. This itself is uh, uh, propagating appropriate COVID-19 behavior, wherein we are telling them as to what requires to be done. And we are also assuring them that the government is doing uh, the best possible and is the dri main driver that a uh, lot of so-called uh, developed countries are also looking forward to what India is doing, how India is combating, and how India is successful. Uh, because even today, we have not even touched 1% of our population, whereas most of the developed economies have uh, touched 3 to 4% of the total population getting affected. Uh, so there is a lot to learn from what India has done, which has been rightly brought out by Dr. Malram Bhargav, and uh, how and why uh, we should take appropriate behavior and how we can motivate the local youth and others and how we can explain the issue to them has been brought out very well by Dr. Sandhya. So I'm thankful to both the speakers uh, for giving out such detailed insights and for coming on the uh, show and uh, uh, from the busy schedule. And also, I would like to thank Dr. Kamal Kishore, who was here, member NDMA, who spearheaded this cause from the National Authority and uh, has always been a source of inspiration for all of us. So with this, I thank everyone and all the participants uh, for a, a good learning that we had for last two hours. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, uh, Dr. Sandhya, we take uh, your permission. If you can share that video, we can, uh, uh, since you have developed in different languages, Indian languages, that would be very, very beneficial. And if you permit us, uh, we can uh, put it on the NIDM's website to the state government if, with the permission of yours. Uh, what oh, is absolutely, 100%. That's what I've done it for, for the common man. I can do the hard work, but I can't get it to the to the people that need to hear it. And, and I know that uh, it will help, uh, you know, calm people. It will help people be prepared and um, it will help reduce the strain um, on, you know, my colleagues in India. And that uh, was my you. intention. Yeah, I see that millions of followers uh, on YouTube, uh, your uh, video. So uh, that would be very, very beneficial. And uh, thank you very much for giving your uh, consent for using this video for the larger public dissemination. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it is my, that is my heart's desire, actually. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so it's a, uh, I would like to convey my heartfelt thanks to uh, Dr. Balram Bhargav, uh, to Dr. Sandhya Swami, uh, Ramanathan, and also uh, Major General Manoj Kumar Bindal, uh, Executive Director of IDM, Mr. Kamal Kishore, Member NDMA, uh, Dr. Nuradha Amorya, who is the coordinator of this webinar. Uh, my heartfelt thanks to everyone who could maneuver, and this is a, going to be a big campaign uh, for India as a Jan Andolan, which Honorable Prime Minister said. And the point suggested by all the speakers, uh, Bhar uh, Dr. Bhargav and you, and Mr. Kamal Kishore, uh, General Bindal, uh, we will be designing our campaign in future also, and we will be using as well. And we will also definitely will get some support from uh, ICMR, because they validate the uh, content of many of the things which are going into a kind of a public domain, whether it's uh, medically true or false and whatever. So uh, we would be grateful for your support, uh, Dr. Bhargav, yeah, in future also in designing our campaign and Dr. Sandhya, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to all everyone, all the distinguished participants who have joined this uh, uh, campaign and uh, we wish you to kindly spread uh, these messages should not remain confined to you only. So you share with your better half, your family and friends and take this forward. Thank you very much to all of you. And we say thank you very much once again. And we take the permission to close this uh, uh, this webinar is a very, very useful webinar, which I've heard uh, in the, uh, on COVID-19 on the public behavior, appropriate behavior, and also the clinical capacity uh, of the Indian government, which is taking into 
as a kind of a global health. Thank you very much to all of you. Dr. Anuradha, thank you very much uh, you. for taking this and uh, kindly close that. Sure, sure. Thank, thank you. you.